I don't have to put a grade title on my children. I can just teach them where they're at. This phonics and English course was a lifesaver. going to sit outside to film this video but it may not be ideal right now there's rain coming it's thundering the roosters are crowing the flies are all stirred up because of the rain so they're flying around all over the place the air conditioner just kicked on so I may need to just go inside <laughs> film this video okay I came inside so that I didn't have to compete with the flies and the roosters. The roosters were being very talkative. The flies are all stirred up because of the rain. It was starting to thunder. I'll probably still go back and sit on the porch at least for a minute just because I enjoy the way the air feels before the rain. So after I get done with this video, I'll probably go back out there for just a minute, but decided to come in here so I can sit down and talk to you for a second. I have started planning our homeschool curriculum for this upcoming school year and as I was doing that I got to thinking and I was like you know I should really sit down and talk about what worked for us and what didn't work for us this past year so that I have it to go back and look on and so that you all can see what worked for us and what didn't work for us as well. So grab a drink, get comfy, and let's chat for a minute. Maybe you're a homeschooling parent, grandparent, whatever the case is and you're looking for some information or maybe you just want to hang out with me for a little while today. Either way, thank you for being here. I'm Tiffany and this is our small town life. We do homeschooling, homemaking, and homesteading content here on this channel and would love to have you subscribe and join us. I am a mama to five children, two of which were homeschooled this past year. Homeschooled, learning at home, whatever verbiage you want to use. I had a second grader and a fifth grader this past year. I use those grade terms very loosely because one thing I've learned, one of many things that I have learned while homeschooling over the last four going on five years is that I don't have to put a grade title on my children. I can just teach them where they're at and you know whatever it is that they need. Um, to be working on, to, to be learning, whatever we want to be learning, wherever their skill set is at, I can just, I can meet them there. And we do not have to meet a certain expectation for a grade level. But if I was going to put a grade level, I suppose I would have had a second grader and a fifth grader. I have a stack of books sitting here in front of me. I did not pull all of our books out, but I did get several. And that way I can kind of show you the teacher's books that I used the most. I can talk to you about how we utilize different books for different subjects, kind of what work pages and things like that looked like, and how we organized our work. So I do have a pretty good stack in front of me, but I didn't pull all of them out. We used mostly Bob Jones this past year, BJU Press, BJU, Bob Jones University. That is mostly what we used this past year, and spoiler alert, we'll be using a lot of it this coming up year as well because we really enjoyed it. It took a little while, as with anything new, for us to kind of find our groove and find out how it worked best for us and how it worked best for our family, what ways we wanted to utilize things to make them work for us and make them the most beneficial for us. But once we got in that groove, it was really easy and it turned out to be a very beautiful thing as far as our schooling for my children. Let me move my books around here so I can get to them a little bit easier. Ooh, the wind is starting to blow out there. I'm going to start with something that is actually not BJU. This is More Than Words, and this is by Master Books. And this is what we used for Bible this past year. We had it already. We had been working through it a little bit at a time. And so we kept working through this this past year together as a family, both boys sitting down and doing this together. 
I do like this. It's pretty simple and straightforward. It is definitely tailored for the younger age groups, but Easton, I think, still really benefited from it as well. Easton's my older son. And it was something that we could sit down and do together as a family, even though my boys are in different age categories. This is something we could still sit down and do together. And we actually do not write in this book. I have one workbook and it's intended for you to be able to write in it, but we do not do that. The boys both have what we call a creation notebook and they use this notebook for so many things. When we need to do drawings, the things that I would have them do out of this book, they would do over in their notebook. Anytime they needed extra paper for math problems or anything like that, they always use their creation notebook. I've done this the last couple of years and I like that because I can keep this one notebook and have so much of their little creations and different things in it, their work. Everything is just in one place and it's very easy to keep and hold on to. So they did the work in their creation notebook. And there's the rain. I also wanted to jump in right here real quick. I noticed as I was editing and I wanted to add this in. You will not see any of the review books or review pages that came with the curriculum. So especially in the younger grades, there would be a work text and then a review booklet. And we would utilize the work text and not always the review pages. I only pulled the review pages if I felt like extra work was needed in a certain area. Very rarely did we touch that book. It was mostly the work text pages that we worked through. So I wanted to put that out there and say that because some of the BJU curriculum, especially with the younger groups, come with a work text booklet and a review booklet and we did not use much of the review pages again making it work for us and trying to simplify it to make it work for our family. This is the BJU spelling and you'll notice I have level one and level five. I said Hudson was a second grader but one of the things that we did was if there was an area we felt like the level one was better for him then that's what we did. If there were areas that the level two is better for him then that's what we did and you'll see that reflected in this. I love BJU spelling. It's pretty straightforward. Let me open up to a list and show you. So there's a list of words and then several activities. And we would just split those activities up through the week. And then if you want to do a test at the end of the week on the words, you can. You know, that's, that's your decision as a homeschooler. Uh, and of course, depending on your state's laws and regulations, but in my state, I do not have to test. And so there were some things we did test in, some things we didn't. Huddy did do spelling tests because he enjoyed that. So we would split the work up through the week, test at the end of the week, and then move on to the next list the next week. And they were able to get through this pretty quickly as far as how much time in a day that it took. And I feel like it was really beneficial for them. I also wanted to mention, and if you watch the curriculum unboxing, which I'll link for you, down in the description box, or if you've just followed our family for a little while, then you kind of know a little bit about this. but. Another thing that we tried this year that just didn't work was that Easton tried to do the BJU online courses, the videos where you get online and watch the videos that way, and it just didn't work for him. We tried to do it across all subjects, and it was just a little too much. It was too much screen time. It just didn't work, didn't work well for Easton. I felt a little disconnected from what he was learning, again, because we tried to do it across all subjects, and... So that just didn't work. We ended up modifying his work pages and me helping him, adding in some different things for him, which you'll see in a minute. But that was that was one thing, and I'm not saying that it wouldn't work for some children, for some students, it just didn't work for Easton, and that's okay. BJU's handwriting is another course that I really liked. Over the years, I've gone back and forth on handwriting curriculums and whether or not I thought they were worth our time or not. BJU's handwriting curriculum is worth the time and worth the money. It is fantastic. It's a precursive style handwriting for the younger children. And so the way Hudson was taught his letters, he will easily be able to transition into cursive. And then Easton was already working on some cursive, which he wasn't quite ready for at the beginning of the year. So I actually had to 
pause with him, teach him a little bit myself, back up a little bit and get him to the point where he was ready to write in cursive. But overall, fantastic, fantastic curriculum. This is a little sample of one of Hudson's pages that I had sitting here. Knock, knocking you around with all these books. Two of the teacher's books that I pulled out are the phonics and English one and math two. I have, uh, didn't have any teacher books for Easton's because like I said, originally we had planned on him doing his online. So we just kind of had to work through that. But these are the two teacher books that I used the most. I had the teacher books for all of Hudson's subjects, but these are the ones that I pulled out the most. This phonics and English course was a lifesaver when it came to teaching Hudson how to read. At the beginning of the year, he really didn't have a lot of want to when it came to learning how to read and had kind of struggled with it in the past. That's one of the reasons why we did this level one. And I remember when I first looked at this and I first looked at, we did the reading, and when I first looked at some of the readers, I've got one here somewhere. When I first looked at these readers, I was like, you mean by the middle of the year, he's going to be reading that? By the end of the year, he's going to be reading that? Like, I just, I just don't know. Y'all, he was and he is. And so, as I've been planning for next year and looking at next year's curriculum, a lot of it has writing, and I think, oh, will he really be writing like that by the middle of the year? Will he really be writing like that by the end of the year? But I'm like, you know what? I trusted it because I know what this phonics course did for Hudson. I done got y'all all crooked after I've knocked you around. The phonics characters and just the way this is laid out, utilizing this with the reading, y'all, it was an answered prayer. I can't say enough good things about it. It did take us a, a little while to kind of get in the rhythm of it, really figure it out and figure out how I wanted to teach it and what I wanted to utilize out of the teacher book, out of the extras that came with it. But once we kind of got in our rhythm, y'all, I, I just can't say enough good things about it. And then math was the other teacher book that I pulled out pretty often just because it had a good storyline to it to go with what he was learning. Now, for science and history, or heritage studies, as BJU calls it, I just pulled out the level one, but Easton had these as well. For these subjects, we found that trying to do everything in them was a little too much. It was a little too much for us and for the season of life that we're in. I have two littles as I like to call them, one that's almost two and one that's four months old. It was just too much to try to do everything every day. So we would do math and language and spelling every day. We did handwriting pretty much every day. And then the other things we would kind of add to, we did Bible every day, but science, history, heritage studies, and even handwriting, I went through and kind of picked and did a little picking and choosing, and sometimes I would even just ask the kids, like, what do you want to learn about? And if there were some things in the book that kind of went along with that, then we would pull the book out and utilize that, whether it was Hudson's book or Easton's book. And if not, then I would just find other sources for those things. We did not do those every day, but they were really nice to have. Again, a, a benefit and a beauty of being a homeschool family, learning at home, is being able to make it work for you. When we first started the, the school year, even though I had said and I knew that it was going to be hard for us to try to do everything every day, I was like, I was really gung-ho. You know how you are at the beginning of the school year. And I was like, we're going to do it all. We're going to do it all every day. And it quickly just became too much. But then I was able to step back because I can, because I'm the teacher, <laughs> because I'm the mom. And I said, you know what? These are the things we're going to do every day. And these are the things that we're going, going, we're going to do one day a week, two days a week the things that we're just going to utilize as we need them. And that made our, our homeschool days <laughs> much better for us. And y'all, this curriculum, BJU's curriculum, is just so beautiful. I had a couple of things that I wanted to show you, like the cover of this reading book and the cover of the science book. 
they kind of speak to you about how this curriculum is. I almost went with a curriculum that was very black and white, straightforward, because that's what I was drawn to for myself. Then the more I started thinking about it, I was like, this is what the kids will like. They will enjoy all of the color and the beautiful pictures right now at this stage in their life. And so that's what we're going to go with. And it has, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful curriculum. Something else I wanted to show you. So I told you that Easton tried the online learning and it didn't work. So we stepped back from that. And what we did, we kind of reevaluated his curriculum as far as being all BJU or if we wanted to incorporate other things in it as well. So he would still do some BJU things, some work pages and things, especially as um, I wanted to pull them out to supplement. And then he also did some ACE curriculum accelerated christian education and he only did english math and then some word building which is kind of like a spelling with ace it is paces so you get the pace i think he just pulled one out for me to show you i think this was the very first ones that he did and you work through a pace and you take a test and then you go on to the next pace and each one takes about three weeks to work through and you can finish up a pace and then move on to a new fresh one and it feels very much like okay I, I finished something and I'm moving on and so we used these for Easton as well as kind of pulling some of those other work pages I also thought I'd talk to you briefly about how we organize all of the work pages because there are a lot of pages <laughs> you could either you could do them in the book and we did that sometimes we just left them in the book uh, but what I found worked best, especially for the kids that wanted to actually tear the page out and use it that way, was to have these folders. And I, just because of this, the way that I organize things, the way my mind works, I labeled them one through six and did kind of six weeks at a time. And we would put the finished work in these folders for every week and then at the end of the six weeks we're at the end of this the school year now so uh at the end of our last six weeks i would pull the stuff out choose what pages i wanted to keep and put that in a separate binder get rid of the rest and refresh the folders for them to put their work in a few other things that we did through the year is adventure academy the kids like that and like having that as kind of a bonus little fun thing to do a lot of times we would do stuff like that on Fridays. Prodigy is a fun math game that the kids like. There may be, hey boys, boys, does Prodigy have a language program too? I think it has math and language. And those are some things that they liked to do online as a fun treat at the end of the week. They're still learning, <laughs> but it was like a game and they really enjoyed that. All right, y'all, that's it for this one. If you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe and be part of our family. And if you're already one of us, you know what I'm going to say, and I mean it with all of my heart. I love you. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all. The babies are waking up. Nap time is over.